Yo, what's going on guys? It's G Miners here. And as you probably already saw in this video, we're going to be going over a build with the brand new exotic chess piece, Gear Falcon's Hauberk, or however this is supposed to be pronounced. And the main thing that we're going to be benefiting off of from this exotic is going to be the bonus weapon damage that we get. The first part of the exotic perk says your weapons gain a bonus to damage briefly after you emerge from being invisible. So naturally, if you pair this thing with an infinite invis hunter build, it's going to be pretty broken. What's even better about the bonus damage, as you can see from here, is that it is a 35% increase, which is massive compared to all other current buffs in the game. Most buffs are around the 20 to 25% range. Bubble used to be a hard meta back in the day because Weapons of Light used to be 35% for around 15 seconds. And with this build, we're going to be chaining that 35% endlessly so this is going to be like a permanent weapons of light but then we're also going to be able to get this to stack way higher with some additions to the build so make sure to stick around so you can see everything we are running right now let's start off by taking a look at our void subclass layout super isn't going to matter a ton for this build so run whatever you want i just always prefer deadfall and then after that, I would personally run Gambler's Dodge. This is going to allow us to get our Smoke Bomb back, which we can use as an extra debuff. But if you want a shorter cooldown or reload, then Marksman Dodge will also work fine. The main reason I do like having the option to get my melee back is because we are running Stylish Execution. This aspect is the main reason we are able to keep invis up at almost all times. If we manage to kill an enemy that is either weakened, suppressed, or volatile, then we're going to gain invisibility. This will also let our next melee attack weaken enemies to keep this chain of invis going. However, we are going to be having a much better way to reproc Stylus Execution, which is going to come from one of our fragments. And then after this, I just run Vanishing Step for the added invis through our dodge. If you did want to make this more of a team-based build, then you could always opt for Trapper's Ambush, but I think Gear Falcons is more of a solo play exotic. For our fragments, first up is going to be Echo of Obscurity. This is going to give us invis on finisher final blows. Gear Falcons also gives us benefits for finisher kills. This gives a reserve overshield if we do manage to finish an enemy while we're invis. And then dodging is going to activate this overshield, which will also give increased class ability regen. For endgame content, invis finisher is super clutch. So now we get a double purpose out of this with Gear Falcons on. Second is going to be Echo of Undermining. This gives our grenades weakening effects, which also is going to trigger stylish execution on its own. This is going to be especially clutch if we manage to make a bunch of tankier enemies weakened, because we can then chain kill them with stylish execution, continue to proc invis, get the 35% weapon bonus damage, and then keep chain killing, which is going to make for a really simple cycle. And this is also going to pair with Echo of Instability, which is one half of the key to making this build shine. By getting a grenade kill, we're going to get 10 seconds of volatile rounds. This is going to apply to all of our void weapons. And then by using volatile rounds to kill an enemy, this too is going to reproc stylish execution. So instead of using the built-in weakened melee, we're going to be able to just spam volatile rounds at enemies, keep going invis, and then also maintain the 35% weapon boost. The other half of this is then going to be Echo of Starvation. Since we do need grenades to gain volatile rounds, that means we need a way to get these nades back. So by grabbing an Orb of Power, we are going to constantly be procking Devour, which will then give us chunks of grenade energy back each time we get a kill. This will keep our grenade up, which then keeps up the volatile rounds, which then keeps up Stylus Execution, which maintains the 35% weapon boost. Definitely a lot of moving parts with this build, but the synergies are kind of crazy when everything works properly. The main combo that we are trying to pull off with this setup is first getting a grenade kill to proc the volatile rounds, and then after that, getting kills should proc your invis, which will then also proc the bonus weapon damage. Then the other thing that you do need to manage is then grabbing orbs of power. Since you do need a void weapon with this build to proc volatile rounds, then you are also going to be able to use harmonic siphon for one energy on your helmet. This is going to spawn an orb of power for every double kill you get. So with Devour proct on top of this, we're also able to maintain our grenade to keep volatile rounds up. 
there are two main mods that I run with this build. First up is going to be Elemental Ordinance to spawn in Void Elemental Wells. This could also be easily subbed out for something like Reaping Wellmaker, or you could honestly just run both. And then with this, to get even more bonus damage, you are going to want Font of Might. This will be another 25% Void Weapon damage. So very quickly, this takes us from our base damage to a 1.93x damage multiplier by using Gerfalcons, Weakened Grenades, and then also Font of Might, which is practically double damage at all times. The two main loadouts I like to run are going to be a Void SMG like Funnel Web or Unforgiven, along with Izanagi's Burden. Your primary is going to constantly rip through ads at double damage, and then since Izzy already hits like a truck, adding the 35% buff and the 15% debuff make it one-shot almost everything. If I were to take this into GMs and Master Content or even Solo Lost Sectors, I think something like Lay Monarch is a much better option. This is going to have Intrinsic Overload, it hits much harder at base to the point where you can easily just primary down champs with it, and then it will still benefit from all the stacking along with the Volatile Rounds. Plus, the Headshot Explosion also deals AoE damage, so this thing is going to feel much stronger in harder content, and you can always combine this with something like Taipans for boss damage as well. I think this build is actually super strong, and I'm definitely interested in trying it out in some harder content when GMs are around this season. To see where it lines up, let me know what other builds you guys are interested in seeing this season in the comments below, and if you want to watch me doing some low mans and speedruns live, make sure to check me out over on Twitch. Anyways, that's all for this video, guys. As always, have a good one. Peace.